Hey everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Now we're going to be taking a look at the Z690 Master. Uh, the original videos did go up yesterday. I've done the CPU reviews with the i5 and the i9 like everybody else. I've done a DDR4 versus DDR5 review as well if you'd like to have a look at it. Looking at the comments early on, you've all kind of enjoyed that. So maybe I should do some more of that stuff. Uh, if you do like the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, do all of those things if you would like. But for now, we have to do the intro bit where it says OC3D and all that kind of spangly stuff so that we can move on to actually reviewing the master. Is it though? Okie dokie then, peeps, straight into the board in its glory. If you're wondering why it's not in a case, it's because I've tested all the boards ready and I tested all the boards before I made the graphs. So that's why the boards are out on the side again. Anyway, two eight pins at the top, solid pins in these as well. Look. So when you come in and have a look, you can see they are solid pins when it captures the light. And that means uh, better connectivity. Normally the pins are kind of like folded over and stuff. The pins all the way down the 24 pin are solid as well, which again is better for uh, connectivity, conductivity, pickup. Uh, up by the 8 pin, there is actually, I'm going to just walk you around this. I'm going to have to do it on the tripod though, because trying to move this is kind of difficult. But anyway, there we go. Look, but point is there are two fan headers up here. Two is quite rare, but when we pan across, you can see there are another four. So there are six fan headers along the top. The grey one is your CPU, that's your CPU optional. And uh, then one of these is, it's a system fan and a pump. And this is a system fan and a pump as well, which is weird that you've got dual pumps up across the top. Uh, but we will come back and talk about the Finza Ray 3. These heat sinks are massive and uh, they've got massive bases on them, but I will go into more depth for you in a second. Anyway, you have a couple of RGBs up here. You have one four pin and then you have a three pin, the three pin being your addressable, then your uh, post readout and a power button. No reset switch around here though. I'm just looking at the bottom. I have found the reset switch. It is hidden. Uh, then we come down, 24 pin, all those lovely solid pins then you can see that there is another fan header here. This is a temperature header as well. You get some temperature probes in the box. There's not a great deal in the box other than a Wi-Fi thing and some SATA cables. A couple of USB 3.2s up here and then just below it, there's a USB 3.2 Gen 2. Further down, you have Thunderbolt headers and six SATAs down the bottom. Weirdly, this is where your poster LED lights are. Normally they're up near the readout because obviously the numbers and the stages are all kind of linked together but they're down there so you have your cpu dram post gpu ones god my camera tripod is being naughty today i am trying anyway so you've got your front panel headers here coming along and you can see fan 5 pump and then you can also see fan 4 system fan 4 so you can plug a pump into this one if you want. It doesn't particularly make any difference because you can just smash them onto full whack anyway for pumps. A couple of internal USBs, another fan, so lots of fan headers. So in total, it one, two, six, seven, eight, nine. You've got 10 in total on the board itself. So that's actually loads and loads. Don't forget though, and I use them loads, is it's PWM 4-pin, you can get uh, splitters. And I normally run, like, if I've got a 360 millimeter AIO on the top up here, and I want it to be connected to the CPU header, then I'll just put a single fan out, three, and then wire it all into one header anyway to save on cabling. And it makes it easy to make things slick around the back. Now, this is your DDR5 slot. A lot of the other boards have then had a secondary slot that shared the bandwidth. Uh, whether they're right or wrong, 
or not. These are both wired into the chipset with US, sorry, with PCI Express 3, amazingly. So not very much bandwidth on this, no sharing on that. Also, the uh, NVMe here goes into the CPU and that is actually PCI Express 4. So a bit of a strange one. Uh, then you do have another couple of NVMe's underneath here. Uh, then the heat sinks, as I've said, these are behemoths. There's big aluminium bits on the bottom. Then you've got the fins on the top with a uh, coating, which is meant to enable heat transfer. You can see at the edges, when I don't zoom in too much, you've got the little indentations. Now I'd call those lervers or lerves if they were on a car bonnet. And I know they're not, but there's a better view for you. Uh, and it just massively increases surface area, also allows air movement as well. You can see what I mean by how thick the bases are, then with the fins on the top. There's a lot of material going on with these heat sinks. And the one at the back is actually massive, like ginormous. And then I'm going to try and get you a view around the back as well. Because you can see there's a big aluminium heat sink just nestled in underneath here which attaches to it all. So it's a big chunky heat sink. Now the one at the back here is actually for the 10 GBE ethernet because that's in there as well. But the bit I don't get is they've gone to all this effort with this wicked heat sink and then where's that heat meant to go? There's no fans or anything to come out of the back. Heat rises. So it's just going to end up getting penned in by this plastic. I don't really understand it. And that's kind of why the, and I'll show you to it now, show you it now, the VRM tests were less than, you know, they weren't, they're not bad, don't get me wrong, they're not bad, they're not hot. Definitely better than some of the stuff in the past. But I do think it could have been better. And I did think about being all like um, aggro and snapping this off in the video. But then it meant I'd have to have, benched it and tested it again and in reality I kind of would like to do that but like I said it's just it's just a shame I understand that we need stuff but couldn't this have been like metal and played a part in it or couldn't we have oh, th I just think there could have been more that they could have done with it the plastic is just easy and lazy because the rest of the heat sinks are actually so nice and well done and grown up and understanding of thermodynamics and then they stick a plastic insulator on the top with nowhere for the heat to go and this is where the main bulk of the heat is going to be generated as well and I say to you there's nowhere for it to go because there's no vents around the back there's no I wouldn't have liked a fan but at least it would have shown a little bit of thought and there's nothing but round the back, very well laid out. Nice big stack, PCI Express 3. Then you've got PCI Express 3 Den 2 along here. Couple of um, uh, USB type Cs. No mention of Thunderbolt on these though. And that kind of links into the fact that there's a Thunderbolt header on the inside. So you're gonna probably need an extra add-in card that you'll need to buy separately. Display port, don't forget you need onboard graphics for that. If you do have a dedicated graphics card fitted, you obviously don't need this. This is kind of like a backup. Or if this graphics card has stopped working. If you're gaming and, and you have a graphics card fitted, your graphics card here is where you need to um, have everything connected. Audio over here, and then you've obviously got Wi-Fi, 6E and stuff like that on the back because that's all part of the Intel chipset now. So when we start off with the benchmarking, Cinebench R20 single thread went to the bottom of the graph and I was a bit concerned at this point that it wasn't going to do particularly well. But then when you kind of mix it up a little bit and you go into the multi-threaded stuff, you can see it's actually the top of the graph. Now normally if the single is not that great because it's not boosting, then it means that the multi-core won't be particularly doing that well either. But they've obviously sorted out the power requirements on this, which is meaning that you're getting a really good uh, average clock, which has done that little bit better in the tests. Now, you can see the Maximus Hero overclock on the top. That was for the original part of the CPU review. Uh, and we've, it was the board that we did it on, so that's why it's there. Haven't done a full overclock on all the other boards, basically because we just didn't get enough time. Uh, 
samples were late, held in customs, lots of excuses. But anyway, to get a decent amount of boards done for launch, we kind of skipped that bit. Also, with some of them, uh, they need a little bit more BIOS tweaking to be able to work out the to be able to work better with the P and the E corns at the same time. Excuses laid. There you go. But the fact that it did that well with the uh, basically just all I did was go in and enable XMP. It was the only thing I changed, and it had done really well with the multi-threaded stuff. The rest that you can see R23 single threaded here did a little bit better, which meant it sat in the middle of the graph. And then when you go on to uh, the other one, it did uh, with the multi-threaded, it was in amongst the pack, but the upper end of the pack. Gaming wise, again, it was fairly strong. Uh, not graph topping, but did really well. And then to be honest with you, with all the other results, I can show you lots of other results. You can also go to the Overclock 3D website, go and click in, have a look, look at Power Draw, look at all the other games, look at the games graph split out rather than having them in a big thing. Far Cry, Far Cry 6, Shadow of the Tomb Raider are all CPU intensive games, I might add. That's why we do it, because at the end of the day, we're testing a board. If we were to do it at 4K, that test is just really to tell the difference between graphics cards. It doesn't make it really much difference between motherboards and CPUs so much. Well, not enough to be able to tell the finite differences. We actually need to really stress it by smashing it with loads of frames per second. So a really good way of doing that and finding, ugh, I hate the word bottlenecks, is to do with 1080p. So that's why we do it. I know it's not, you might not be playing 1440p at home, but if you're like, if you want to know how your rig's going to do it 1440p in 4K, then technically you want to be looking at a graphics card review. Anyway, <gasps> deep breaths. Cracking board. Actually, really like it. Was a little bit less money than I was expecting, which they get a positive note for. Great layout, nice monochrome design, lots of black, not too much bling. Did really nicely. Only thing that, in my honest opinion, spoiled it was that horrible bit of plastic along the back, basically insulating those VRMs, and that's why the VRM temperatures aren't lower. So it's a weird one. I did genuinely want to rip it off, but then I thought, if I rip it off in the video, then I'm going to have to build it again, I'm going to have to do some more tests. It's going to take me another four or five hours. And in reality, if I spent four or five hours on this, I'd actually rather sit there with four or five hours and do some more overclocking on it. But I'm actually going to spank the Aorus Extreme, which is the next board up for me to test. And I have allotted three days to do the testing on it, write the review and then sort the, the video out. So we've got much more time allotted for that one. The fact that we actually managed to get this one out for launch, it was uh, better than planned anyway had a little bit spare time and I thought I need to make sure that I get some uh, Aorus content live on launch day. Now you may think this video didn't go live on launch day Tom, you're having a laugh. It did on the website, which you can always check by the way. And I know a lot of people have been moaning for ages that we don't have a mobile uh, website and stuff and in reality there's a big video coming about it because of the age of the code in it we haven't been able to do it um, and it would be a complete rewrite to have been able to sort it out. So that's what we're doing. Completely new website. Probably shouldn't have said that, should I? Anyway, it's happening. Finally. But good little board, cracking little board, definitely for the upper mid range. I'm going to, I know it's DDR5 anyway, but I would say this is the sort of thing that you want to be not necessarily aiming for, but it's definitely I9 territory. I don't think you want to be putting a seven or a five in this. You'd be better off going further down the pack. But if you're looking to invest some money, long term, i9, one of these, some good DDR5, you're already looking at over a thousand pound, thousand dollars at that point. So that's why I'm saying, you know, big processor, decent memory. And I think you'll be loving life. Then all you gotta do is try and find a graphics card. Don't even go there. Anyway, this has been the tiniest one. Yes, it's been quick. It's because I'm hungry. I need a cup of tea. And I really need some lunch because I've got another video to do before I can call it a day, a week, whatever. But after the last few weeks of Intel madness, I definitely need a weekend off. Love you all lots. See you all again soon. This has been the tiniest one out. Ding. Love you, sis.